Hi, everyone. My name is Chong. I'm here with my advisor, Professor Randy Paffrons. And um, today, um, I would like to introduce our paper titled Anomaly Detection with Robust Deep Auto Encoders. The first question uh, we are thinking about is, what are anomalies? We think there are two types of anomalies, noise and outliers. Noise is element-wise unexpected values in our data, like, in, uh, like, some, uh, like here, uh, cryptic dots uh, in our image. And then outliers are unexpected instances in our data. We want to denoising and detecting outliers. And the first thing I want to say, um, both problems, denoising and detecting outliers, can be handled in the same framework, our robust deep auto encoder. Second, when we train our model, we do not have any noise or outlier-free training samples. Like when we denoising, we do not have any noise-free um, image. So this is a majority difference with um, a denoising autoencoder in the literature. Um, our model is combination of robust PC and autoencoders. So here, I would like to uh, first introduce these two models. First, autoencoders. Autoencoders is um, multi-neural uh, neural networks, which um, its reconstruction layer is, uh, which output layer is tries to um, reproduce its input layer. And uh, the cost is defined as its reconstruction and its input. This um, autoencoders learn the input data themselves. This process seems trivial because you can use identity map. But what makes autoencoder becomes non-trivial is we can have the hidden layers, low dimensional and non-linear. Here we think non-linear is very important property that we think autoencoders are non-linear projection Nonlinear dimension reduction method. Uh, in our experiments, we use standard uh, experiment setting that we use, um, and we use a single moid function as active function. For robust principal component analysis, robust PCA. Robust PCA assumes that our data X contains anomalies and it splits the data into two parts, L and S, where well, L could be perfectly or accurately uh, projected onto linear, uh, a linear subspace, where well, S contains anomalies. We want to minimize the rank of the L and also the sparsity of the S. Here, the nuclear norm and the one norm is just a convex relaxation of low rank and uh, sparse. Um, we assume our data uh, lies near nonlinear manifold, but also contains anomalies. We follow the idea of robust PCA that splits the data into LD and S, where LD could be accurately uh, presented by hidden layers of an autoencoder, where S contains anomalies. So our method can be viewed as replacing the nuclear norm here, um, with, which is linear projection, with a nonlinear autoencoder. <laughs> this is the picture of our model that for autoencoder, we do not give the, all the input data. We only give a, the autoencoder part of the data, LD. Well, this part of the data 
uh, had no less noise and could be perfectly reconstructed and has lower reconstruction error. Well, those will return high reconstruction errors will be filtered into S. So um, the lambda plays a very important role in our model that small lambda in, encourage, uh, encourage more data filtered into S, while large lambdas will make S more sparse. For detecting outliers, we assume uh, noise is unstructured, and thus we use L1 now. But outliers are structured that in our data matrix, each row is an instance where each column is featured. That's an outlier like um, a picture of seven in picture of twos. Should the entire row should be different with, with other instance. So we want to group this entire row, group elements over row. So we use L21 norm to group elements. L21 norm is defined as, for, for each column, it defines as a group. They put L2 norm on group and then introduce L1 norm between groups. So our model, we use L21 norm to replace L1 norm. And since outlier is instance-wise, row-wise, so we use S transpose. Here is picture of our model that we assume, we assume that input X contains outliers. Those outliers are hard to reconstruct. We only give the autoencoder L part. L are majority of the data, the normal data. They are similar with each other. They share more information. And those normal data has low reconstruction error. Well, those outliers, which return high reconstruction error, were filtered into outlier filter S. Um, for our training, we borrow the idea of ADMM that training the each part with other parts fixed. Um, we train the autoencoder with X fixed, fixed, and then we shrink S with autoencoder fixed. If we fixed S, the L part just is a standard autoencoder. It can be minimized by uh, backpropagation. When we fix L, the minimize S becomes a standard proximal grad gradient problem. And uh, we, uh, for our training method, we haven't had um, theoretical justification yet. Um, but we got some ideas. Our ideas is inspired by Dijkstra algorithm and the ADMM. Um, please uh, note that this Dijkstra is not the Dijkstra. Uh, that, <laughs> uh, that Dijkstra, DIG Dijkstra algorithm is very famous Dijkstra algorithm. Uh, is uh, find the shortest part in a graph. But this DYK Dijkstra algorithm is less famous, but we use it because it's uh, trying to find um, the intersection of two convex sets. Then it's our um, result for denoising. We think the feature quality of hidden layers in normal deep autoencoder is influenced by noise. Uh, denoising will increase the feature quality. We use supervised model to examine the quality of features. Then we compare the error rate. Um, we we use this noisy data as input to a normal autoencoder and our robust autoencoder. The only difference between these two models is we, we have this 
outlier filter S. Then we use the hidden layer as input to, as input to our predict model. Then we compare the error rate. Those, uh, which model has lower error rates, which model will win. The, this heat map shows our comparison result. The X axis shows different level of corruption. Well, the different choice of lambdas showed in Y axis. And the red part indicate a robust deep auto encoder is much better than the uh, normal deep auto encoder. From here, you can see if the corruption level is low, the um, normal autoencoder and the robust deep autoencoder roughly same. When the lambda, in, when the corruption level increase, input is shown here. Normal autoencoder also reconstructs the noise. Well, our robust deep autoencoder splits the data into two parts. Well, this noise will filter into S and the remaining part is much more cleaner. When the, when the corruption continually increase here, uh, the corruption overwhelms the normal digits and the, the, the noise ruins the data, ruins the data and uh, no one can uh, produce good result. For outside detection, we want to pick out this uh, this um, different digits, and here we need to uh, check the S. Middle row here shows different S picture uh, with different lambda settings. When the lambda is very small, much more data uh, filtered into S, and uh, these are all the instances are claimed as outlier. So it has very high false positive rate. When the, in, the lambda increase, S becomes more and more sparse. I want to here, I want to uh, say compare the error three and error four. That error three contains successfully pick out this six and eight as outlier. Well, it also contains some false positives, five positive, false positives. When we increase lambda a little bit, we still could uh, pick out six and eight as outlier, but we only have two false positives. So we compare our model with isolation forest. Um, uh, we use uh, we range search a bunch of lambdas, and uh, our best F1 score is much better than Isolation Forest best F1 score. Here we we uh, we use the labels just for examining the result. When we train the model, we don't have the labels. So conclusion. Our model is a combination of autoencoder and robust PCA. We could do denoising and detecting outliers. And when we train our model, we do not any clean samples as references. Thank you. <laughs>